This video is part of a series of videos I have created on bonds. The other videos in this series um, discuss valuation of a bond, calculating YTM, etc. In this particular video, my objective is to look at real bonds to understand the amount and timing of expected cash flows. Now, viewers of this video, please note that this was created on January 6th, 2018. So when you look at the bonds later, you may need to adjust the number of expected cash flows depending on when you are watching the video. As a student of finance, you know that the value of an asset derives from the stream of cash flows that an investor can expect from holding the asset. In the case of bonds, these expected cash flows are the promised coupon payments at pre-specified dates, plus the redemption of the face value on the maturity date. When you calculate the value of a bond for the investor today, you are looking at the present value of the entire stream of cash flows, and these are discounted back to the present using the investor's required rate of return. So in other words, the investor's required rate of return determines the present value of these expected cash flows. On the date that a bond is newly issued, it, as per the terms of the bond, the bond promises its investors a stream of coupon payments and the final face value redemption on the maturity date. Now, if you are trying to value the bond on any other date between the issue date and the maturity date, all these promised coupon payments may not all be expected. Some of them may have been paid out already. So in order to understand this, in order to distinguish between expected cash flows, which contribute to the value of the bond on the day you are valuing it, versus the stream of payments that were promised on the issue date, we will look at three bonds. The first bond we will look at is a newly issued bond, which is yet to make its first coupon payments. So for this bond, all promised payments as per the terms are expected as on January 6, 2018, the day I'm creating this video. The second bond that we will look at is a bond that was issued in the past, but will mature in 2018. For this bond, only one coupon payment and the face value redemption are expected standing on this date, January 6, 2018. All other coupon payments have already been made. They are, um, they are in the past, they are history. They do not contribute to the value of the bond today. The third bond we will look at is one that was also issued in the past and will uh, mature at some point in the future. For this bond, some promised coupon payments have already been made. They are not expected anymore, but some residual payments are expected as on January 6, 2018. So that's our plan for this video, looking at three different bonds, understanding what is expected and therefore contributes to the value of the bond today. The bond information we will use comes from FINRA, uh, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, as published in Morningstar. The first bond we will look at is the bond issued by Alibaba Group Holding Limited. Uh, I have mentioned the symbol here. Let's go ahead and look at this bond. The bond issued by Alibaba Group Holding Limited promises a coupon of 4.4%. The bond matures on December 6, 2057. Scrolling down this page a little, we see that the bond was offered on November 29, 2017, but is recorded with a date of, with an issue date of December 6, 2017. So issued on December 6th, 2017 with a maturity date of December 6th, 2057, that's a 40-year bond. The first coupon will be paid on June 6th, 2018 and coupons will be paid semi-annually. 
which means the coupons will be paid on June 6th and December 6th of every year from 2018 until the bond matures in 2057. Let us summarize the timeline of expected cash flows from the Alibaba bond. This bond is still a 40 year bond as on January 6th, 2018. The first coupon payment is due on June 6th, 2018. So all promised coupon payments are expected cash flows. Coupon payments as well as the final redemption, of course. So let's look at the amount and the timeline. <clears throat> coupon of 4.4% will be paid semi-annually. 4.4% coupon on $1,000 face value amounts to $44, which will be split into two payments of $22 each every six months. Therefore, a total of 80 payments of $22 each are expected, plus the redemption of face value of $1,000 on December 6, 2057. So this here is the timeline. This arrow denotes today, January 6th of 2018. A coupon payment of $22 due on June 6th and again on December 6th of 2018, repeated in 2019, 2020 and so on till we reach the year 2057. In the year 2057, on June 6th, the investor will receive $22 on December 6th, the investor will receive the final $22 coupon plus the face value of $1,000. So this is the timeline of expected cash flows from the Alibaba bond. And again, to reinforce, because this is a brand new bond, all promised payments are also expected payments from this bond. Our second bond uh, is a bond issued by Citigroup. This is a 1.75% coupon bond that will mature on May 1st of 2018. Citigroup issued this bond on May 1st, 2013. We will look at the dated date. That's the date that's recorded on the books. Issued the bond on May 1st, 2013, matures on May 1st, 2018. So it was issued as a five-year bond. Of course, at this point, only we are already on um, January 6, 2018, so it's about to mature. There are only um, five months remaining. The first coupon was paid on November 1st, 2013. So November 1st and May 1st, those were the two coupon dates every year for this particular bond. Standing here on January 6th of 2018, there is just one coupon payment remaining and the final face value redemption. I made a small error on the previous slide. I said this bond has five months remaining until maturity. It really has only four months remaining until maturity. So again, summary of the cash flows and timeline of expected cash flows. Summary of cash flows, coupon of 1.75% paid semi-annually, 1.75% amounts to $17.50, split into two payments of $8.75 every six months. Standing here on January 6th, 2018, only one payment of $8.75 remains, plus the redemption of face value on May 1st, 2018. So the timeline of expected cash flows is a single cash flow of $1,008.75 on May 1st, 2018. Our third and final bond is a bond issued by CVS Health Corporation. The bond issued by CVS Health Corporation offers a coupon of four of 2.8 percent matures in on July 20th, 2020 was issued on July 20th, 2015. So it was originally issued as a five year bond. It now has three years remaining. The first coupon was uh, was paid on January 20th, 2016. So January 20th and July 20th. Those are those are and were the coupon dates. 
um, because I will talk about one final thing before I end this video at this point I would like to also draw attention to the last traded price uh, observe that uh, Morningstar or Findra report these as uh, percent of the face value so hundred dollars and ten cents on a thousand dollar face value this is one thousand and one dollars last traded price and the last traded yield um, I will instead of coming back to this web page for that discussion I will just type those out so coming back to our discussion about coupon expected cash flows and so on let's summarize this discussion first the CBS bond was originally a five-year bond but it now has three years remaining until maturity Summary of promised payments, coupon of 2.8% paid semi-annually. 2.8% is a $28 value of coupon, split into two payments of $14 each every six months. Now for this particular bond, the promised number of payments was 10. It was a five-year bond, semi-annual payments. But the number of cash flows that are still expected are six payments of $14 each plus redemption of face value. So standing here on January 6, 2018, the payments that were made in 2016 and 2017 have already been paid. They do not contribute to the value of the bond today. The value of the bond today derives from the expected cash flows. The timeline looks like this, $14 each expected on January 20th and July 20th of 2018, January 20th and July 20th of 2019, January 20th and July 20th of 2020, plus the final $1,000 face value redemption on the maturity date of July 20th, 2020. So to summarize, expected cash flows are what contribute to the value of the bond today. Promised cash flows are cash flows that were promised on the date of issue. Promised cash flows are not the same, are not necessarily the same as expected cash flows, especially when you are looking at the bond at some date between issue date and maturity date and some coupon payments have already been made. Now, before we end this video, a final word on price and yield. You know at this point that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the yield that an investor gets. The higher is the price. When we say higher, it is relative to the face value of $1,000. The higher is the, face is the price that an investor pays upfront. Lower is the yield that the investor gets compared to the coupon rate because all the coupon payments are based on the $1,000 face value. So to understand this, here is our final slide in this video. The Alibaba bond, the last traded price was $1,027.80. This is higher than the face value of $1,000 and therefore the corresponding yield of 4.254% is lower than the coupon rate of 4.4%. The Citigroup bond last traded at a price of $999.60 this is less than the face value. So an investor upfront would pay less than $1,000 to receive the coupon payments that will be paid off of the $1,000 face value. And therefore the investor gets a higher yield, a higher compared to the coupon rate. Yield of 1.883%, which is higher than the coupon rate of 1.75%. CVS Health Corp, this was the one I pointed out just for reference while I was on that web page. A last traded price that is higher than the $1,000 face value, resulting in a yield of 2.759%, which is less than the coupon rate of 2.8%. And that concludes this video on understanding expected cash flows from a bond and for a brief period, understanding the inverse relationship between price and yield.